Welcome to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey Dern, and have I got some exciting news to share with you today. For those of you who've been watching the show, you know that I love cooking and that I also love supporting local, uh, local farms. We have such great, amazing things here in Ontario and, and nothing gives me more pride than to share recipes with you that have uh, lots of Ontario ingredients. So what's my great news? Well, if I said to you, good things grow, what would you say? <gasps> In Ontario! I'm so proud to share with you guys that I am a proud spokesperson for Foodland Ontario. And what that means for you is that today, I'm gonna share with you two, two, not one, but two amazing, amazing recipes that are absolutely delicious and really, really focus on uh, the amazing stuff that we have in Ontario. The first dish, or I'm really gonna do them together, is something absolutely uh, fantastic. It is a jerk, chicken sandwich and with that I'm going to be serving an island coleslaw. So as at timing is everything, uh, the first thing I want to do is get going on that jerk. So first thing that you're going to need for the jerk recipe is um, about 1.5 kilograms or eight uh, thighs, uh, which I have right here, which are skinless and boneless. Um, I'm going to do it as a slow cooker recipe, so I should say it's a slow cooker jerk chicken. Um, and then I have um, my ingredients ready to go to make my sauce. Uh, and a jerk sauce is so flavorful, so um, spicy, if you want it to be spicy, but it absolutely allows you to get really creative in the kitchen. And if you're cooking with your family or you're thinking about your kids, it gives you an opportunity to see what you like, introduce them to different spices, and show them what was grown in their backyard. So for this recipe, I've got Ontario grown um, onions. I'm gonna probably need about a cup and a half of that. So about uh, one large or one medium onion and one small onion should do. Uh, three cloves of Ontario garlic. Um, nothing it wouldn't be a jerk uh, recipe if you didn't have scotch bonnets and these are absolutely gorgeous. I also have my spice mixture over here and in it I've got about two tablespoons of um, loose packed brown sugar. I've got one tablespoon of dried thyme, one tablespoon of allspice, also known as Jamaican pimento, which is really the thing that really makes the jerk the jerk. And I have some smoked paprika. Uh, you could use regular paprika if you want. Smoked paprika is really beautiful in this recipe. And this is the thing, I'm following one of their recipes and usually I want to get creative with it, but I'm gonna say the recipes as they are are just fantastic. Um, having said that, they're a really good guideline. So if you see in the recipe, it says, you know, Ontario onion. I've decided to go with an Ontario cooking onion um, because I find it's quite versatile. Um, and uh, it's like a middle of the road. If I wanted to be a little sweeter, then I could go with a white onion. Um, I don't want to use a red onion for this recipe um, because I just don't think it would flow. And if in season you've got um, spring onions, they would be a nice mixture to add uh, to this. Like you could do a combination of a spring onion if you wanted uh, with this cooking onion. So I'm going to eyeball it a bit, but I know about a, a cup and a half is probably ideal. If you're more comfortable following following a recipe, then I'm gonna encourage you to go to um, foodlandontario.ca and go to their recipes. And they have stuff that is seasonal. They have stuff that is family friendly. They've got recipes that, you know, you can just kind of have an idea of, oh, this sounds interesting. Now, I'm gonna be pureeing this. So you'll see that I've just taken these onions and I've just done a quick, uh, let's say coarse chop. I already have half an onion here. I'm not doing the onion like I usually cut an onion, which is to keep the um, root on to prevent me from crying, only because I am doing such a quick coarse chop and I'm talking and I'm not breathing through my nose, so I'm sure not to cry while uh, cutting these onions. So first thing that goes in are the onions. I've got three beautiful big cloves of garlic. If you have like, let's say three big ones and two little ones, that's fine. Ideally what you're looking for is about this. This is a good amount. That goes in. Scotch bonnets. Why are they called scotch bonnets? What is a scotch bonnet? Scotch bonnet is a pepper and it's about a medium heat 
and you'll notice that I've been wearing gloves and that is because when you're cutting anything like a jalapeno, a Hungarian pepper, anything like that, you wanna make sure that you are wearing gloves because that burn will permeate your skin, you'll feel the burn and then, oh, if you touch your eyes, forget it. So for this recipe, it calls for two to three. I kinda wanna be mindful of the heat, um, so I'm just gonna go with two of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my pepper and cut the end off. And I just want to use the flesh of this. I don't want to use the seeds because the seeds are gonna make it far too spicy. And also I don't really want the little bits of seeds in the recipe. Some folks who like crazy hot wings, I know they like the seeds, that's up to you. If you like the seeds, you use the seeds. I'm not judging. I'm just saying for me in this recipe, I think I would like to not have any seeds in this. And I'm gonna tell you just cutting up this pepper, like cutting it open, woo, it is hot. So in go my onion, garlic, two um, scotch bonnets. It kind of looks like a, a bonnet on a Scots head. I guess that's why they go for it. I've got my dried mixture, as I said before, allspice, thyme, brown sugar, and smoked paprika. In you go, yum, yum, yum. Amazing. I wish, I wish, smell -a vision I could stand here and describe the flavors or I could encourage you to really just make this recipe at home and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So now I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, which is um, a lovely acid. Whenever you're making a jerk, the key thing for a jerk is that you need an acid. So this recipe calls for apple cider, but again, you being the chef in your own kitchen, you get as creative as you want. You could use orange juice or lime juice or any kind of citrus, pineapple juice might even be interesting. I'm also gonna do a quarter of a cup. I'm using low sodium soy sauce here. Um, if you want, you can use the full soy, I mean like the full salt, but that's totally up to you. For this recipe, I'm just gonna say, having made this in the past, you don't really need all that salt. So in goes my soy. I've got all of my yummy ingredients in my handy dandy blender. Lid on, because nobody wants to be sprayed with this. Make sure I set it up properly. And away we go. <laughs> and away we go. And away we go. <laughs> and away we go, yay! <laughs> so I'm gonna let this blend up. When we come back after the break, I'm gonna get my chicken started and then start my coleslaw. Stay tuned. back to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey Dern, and today the spokesperson for Foodland Ontario. Today I'm making two of their amazing recipes. The first one is a slow cooker jerk chicken. Uh, we've just finished uh, making our uh, marinade in this handy dandy magic bullet. Uh, I've got my chicken thighs that are skinless, boneless, ready to rock and roll. I'm now going to add this beautiful, beautiful, mm, 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 woo this beautiful jerk marinade to my chicken. And what I wanna do is set my slow cooker. If I wanna cook it you know, quickly but slow, then I wanna set it for three hours on high, or I can do a slow cook, slow cook, and do that for six hours on low. But what you wanna do inside your slow cooker is uh, mix up your jerk just like I'm doing now. If you want some extra flavor or maybe you just wanna get it prepped the night before, then do exactly what I'm doing here, which is marinating my chicken, and use your fork to kind of poke some holes into the thighs just so we can get some extra jerk in. Although, I'm just gonna say, because we're slow cooking it, and it's not like this is uh, chicken on the bone, it's gonna permeate with flavor. Like, after three hours, it's just gonna be fall apart, just unbelievably delicious. If you didn't have a chance to do a slow cook version of this, then I would say do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is marinating it uh, overnight. 
the longer you marinate it, because there is acid in here, the um, more the chicken is gonna break down. So I'm gonna say maybe six hours as a maximum. I would check your cooking times just to be sure. Uh, and then after you marinate it, you could throw it on the barbecue, throw it on the grill. It's absolutely fantastic. So like I said, I was thinking ahead and right here in my slow cooker, I have got just exactly what I showed you, this beautiful marinated uh, chicken thighs and that beautiful jerk sauce cooking away as we go. So now that we've got this done, I'm just gonna move this out of the way and do the next yummy recipe, which is an island coleslaw. So uh, I love jerk chicken on a bun. Um, and the thing that I think of when I eat jerk chicken on a bun is definitely having a great slaw. Sometimes people call it a po' boy. I'm not sure, but all I know is that it's incredibly delicious. And this recipe is like chock full of Ontario products. We've got Ontario green cabbage. I've got Ontario parsley. I've got this onion is an Ontario onion and I've opted to go with the red one just because I think it would be pretty. You could use purple cabbage if you wanted to in this recipe to make it pretty, it's totally up to you. But I like the idea that the recipe says uh, just the green cabbage for flavor. I also have an Ontario heirloom carrot uh, that I'm gonna add to it. So if I really wanted to be creative, I suppose I could have gone with a purple carrot instead of an orange carrot uh, and instead of purple cabbage, totally up to you. Um, lime juice is key for this recipe as well because we want some acid. I've got some sugar, granulated sugar, white sugar, some ground ginger, which is really lovely to use in recipes. I'm gonna say it's different from fresh ginger, but just as delicious. It really gives you a nice uh, aftertaste. Then we have uh, mayonnaise. You could use a uh, light mayonnaise if you wanted or a full fat mayonnaise, it's totally up to you. But I'm gonna say use mayonnaise in this recipe, not a Miracle Whip. Again, it's up to you. You are the chef at home. Be inspired by these recipes. I mean, for me, I like looking at the recipe and just you know tasting it with my eyes and going, I'm totally gonna do this. Maybe you at home are like, you know what? I really don't want to add you know, parsley. Maybe you wanna add dill. Your palate, your kitchen. They're great recipes to inspire. So here we also have prepared mustard. And what does that mean, prepared mustard? You can get a Keen's dry mustard, or you can have a prepared mustard like this. Uh, you could go with a Dijon mustard, a honey mustard. I've decided to go with a yellow mustard, and I like the fact that it's got the Canada label on it. It just lets me know, even if it wasn't happening here in Ontario, at least it's, you know, from our country, which says a lot about supporting the folksy wokesies we live with. All right, so what I'd like to do is, I've got in my bowl, already ready to go, about a quarter teaspoon of salt and pepper each. Um, I've got about two tablespoons of sugar, and I've got a teaspoon of ground ginger. Uh, I'm gonna encourage you to either write in for the recipe or check out the recipe, because maybe you want a little bit more more ground ginger, maybe you want it to be a little sweeter, maybe you want it a little less sweet, maybe you want to use a sugar substitute. Again, it's totally up to you. So to this, I am going to add three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. And I'm just gonna eyeball it because I've done this for quite some time. But you can definitely uh, take a look and make sure that you're adding the right amount. And then just like a little bit of a of the yellow mustard, not a lot, just for a little bit of color and flavor. And again, the best thing that you could possibly do is taste it. If you taste it, then you will know just how yummy it is. So I'm gonna, oh, and the lime. So uh, I wanna recommend that when you have a lime, if your lime is a little hard, all you have to do is stick it in a microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds and it'll kind of soften it up. If you're not a person who likes to use a microwave, then I'm gonna say, take this and just start a uh, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And what that will do is kind of get the juice easier to extract from the lime. And the other great thing about a lime is you don't actually have to worry about having a juicer or anything like that because there are no seeds. So we're looking for about a tablespoon of lime juice. And what I usually like to do, I know that I added the mayonnaise in first, but what I usually like to do is um, put the lime juice or the acid that I'm using um, on top of the sugar and the salt so that it'll kind of dilute it before I add anything else. So now that I've got this in here, a little bit more lime juice. I'm now going to whisk this up. You can use a whisk, you can use a fork, you can use a spoon, whatever makes you comfy. Mm, 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 mm. And then just get this ready for my coleslaw. 
Doesn't that look beautiful? So, so quick and easy. And the best way to know that if you've done it right or wrong is just to taste it. So this recipe calls for about a liter's worth of shredded cabbage. So I didn't really think that you'd want to watch me shred cabbage, although I do have some here if you really, really, really want to see it. But I do have about a liter's worth of uh, cabbage here. To the cabbage, I'm going to grate this carrot and add it to the cabbage. I'm probably going to do it uh, through the commercial break just so that I can incorporate everything. Uh, I'm going to dice this onion. Um, you can slice it if you want to. Again, it's your recipe, but you just kind of want to go with a small onion and a fine dice because you don't want that onion in your face, but also you do want that onion spread through the recipe so that when you take a bite, you're getting that mm -mm -mm flavor. And then for the color and for flavor, I've decided to go with a flat leaf parsley as opposed to a curly parsley, but flat leaf parsley is fantastic. When we come back after the break, I'm gonna put it all together. Mm -mm -mm. Stay tuned. Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey, and today I am doing some incredible Foodland Ontario recipes. I absolutely encourage you to go to uh, foodlandontario.ca and um, use these again, use the recipe as a guideline. Key, key, key thing I'm going to tell you while I do a very nice fine mince on my um, onion is that you should make a list when you're going shopping. Number one, it'll prevent you from um, impulse buying things that you don't need that tend to go to waste, unfortunately, as well as it'll help you to, you know, uh, be more efficient when you're shopping. You know exactly what you want, how much of it that you need. You can revert to your, uh, refer to your list and know exactly uh, what ingredients you forgot or have missed. Also, go to Foodland Ontario and check out their availability guide because maybe you want to do a recipe. Maybe you're just, you know, like I am and you love shopping local and supporting local, but you happen to know that even though they sell it in Ontario, it's not in season. So Foodland Ontario has this incredible guide that you can go to and check out and it lets you know what's seasonal, what's not seasonal, and sometimes what's grown in a hothouse. It may not be seasonal in a farm, but it might, it might be available uh, due to new farming technologies. So right now, as you can see, I'm dicing up in a really nice fine dice my red onion because I think it'll give this coleslaw some really, really beautiful color. And it's a nice onion. It's not too spicy. It's just a, a nice mild flavor, uh, which will compensate, like, well, sorry, will complement nicely the, um, the heat of the... <laughs> the jerk that we're having, because that, my friends, is going to have a nice kick. I could smell the heat when I was blending it. So now I've got my onion in here, I've got my carrot that I just quickly grated, and now I've got about a quarter cup of parsley that I've washed, and now I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of a chiffonade roll on it. Not really, because I don't want to over um, mince the parsley. I don't want to over chop it because if I over chop it, it's gonna bruise and it doesn't look very pretty. It actually kind of gets a little black. So I wanna make sure that I'm very mindful as I run my blade through and give it a nice quick chop through. And here we go. And I'm gonna add this to my beautiful coleslaw. It's gorgeous. And I have my dressing that has been sitting. And so when you make your coleslaw, I can't really show you it here, but what you're gonna wanna do is you are going to, I'm only gonna add half right now because I'll continue to incorporate it as I blend. You wanna put this in the refrigerator and let it chill for about an hour, ideally. Uh, the longer it chills, you know, the more the flavors have a chance to incorporate, but also don't let it chill too long uh, because it'll get soggy and we don't want that. This is absolutely beautiful in color. The jerk chicken, I can smell it. I don't know if you can see, the lid is off. It was slow cooking. Um, actually, I did a high version of it of uh, three hours. And boy, oh boy, let me just continue to mix this up for a sec, but let me take it out so you can actually get a good look at it. Mm, mm, mm. 
You know, good things grow in Ontario, and you can make really great things from those good things that grow in Ontario, let me tell you. It is like falling apart as I'm actually reaching in to get it. Oh, the smells. And I should also say this, if you can't find a Scotch bonnet because, you know, something is out of season, then just get creative. You know, you could use jalapeno, that's a mild one. You could use um, a habanero or any of the, you know, if you grow peppers of your own at home, then use those. Whatever kind of heat is gonna make you smile. Scotch bonnets are traditional and they really give the jerk a really beautiful, beautiful uh, flavor. Just like you can't really make jerk chicken without allspice because it's the allspice that really, really makes it. Um, and go for a ground one. I mean, you can get allspice berries if you want and then toast them and then grind them if you really, really, really want to commit. But I'm gonna say this recipe is just so great as is. Mm -mm -mm. I'm salivating. I just want to scoop this into my mouth. Be patient. <laughs> so good. All right, so I'm gonna take this beautiful, beautiful jerk chicken and I'm gonna spoon it out onto my lovely buns. Yum, yum, yum. There we go. Now, again, this is a jerk chicken, but maybe you don't want jerk chicken. Maybe you want to try jerk pork, by all means. We've got wonderful Ontario pork. Go for it. Oh, and it'll give it a kind of different flavor too, because I mean, chicken has its own flavor and pork has its own flavor, but just the way that it just soaks it up. And even though I did a slow cooker version of this, uh, and I said that with marinating the thighs, the boneless, skinless thighs as we had, that you could um, grill it on the barbecue. This is a fantastic marinade that you can use to do chicken on the, like, chicken on the bone uh, and barbecue it that way. And the other thing that you should know, which is also fantastic, is make extra of this jerk recipe and then jar it or can it for the next time. And it'll keep for quite some time. And then you'll have it ready to go the next time you're inspired to make a slow cooker jerk or a grilled jerk or an oven roasted jerk or a spit jerk. I mean, look, there's so many options here, it's crazy. So I'm just gonna finish folding and blending this absolutely gorgeous coleslaw, the island coleslaw. You can just see these colors are so, so pretty. And it's not too much. I mean, there's some more of this uh, dressing on the bottom that if I wanted to use, I could. But I'm just gonna say this is actually gorgeous as is. So, so yummy. Uh, you'll also notice that I took the time, even though I have the show, to do a mise en place. And that means I got all of my ingredients ready to go right off the bat so that I could start cooking and I could talk to you about the things, you know, you think of yourself, if it's gonna take you a long time because you don't have a food processor to chop up your cabbage by hand, then that's gonna be the thing that takes the longest, right? But in this case, it's all about flavors. So when you finish making the coleslaw, be sure to let it refrigerate for at least an hour. And then we put the slaw. Look at that. Oh my gosh. This is a hefty Sammy, let me tell you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And there we go. Look at that. Oh, so good. Thank you so much for watching. For this recipe, please visit foodlandontario.ca or check out rogerstv.com. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, good things grow in Ontario. See you the next time.